Now let's take a look at the collision module. So when we look at the debris and dust, let's um, hide the wall so we can see a bit clearly. We can see that the debris and dust actually fall through the chunks. And they're not interacting with the chunks. So for far off scenes, this is fine. But if you are to do any close up shots, then this doesn't look realistic. So for that, we can add collisions to the chunks so that the debris and dust particles interact with these chunks. Uh, let's just ensure that the visibility in the viewport is enabled for debris and dust and smoke for the floors debris dust and smoke and for the columns debris dust and smoke okay perfect so let's get to the collision module and let's um, work with the floors as an example and there we go so let's say we would like the debris and dust to interact with the floors let's say these chunks then what we can do is let's select the floors target collection and let's select these chunks there we go and let's deselect the activators perfect so these are the chunks we would like the debris and dust to interact with. And under collisions module, we have collision tab, collision to static objects and single object particle collisions. So in this example, we're gonna use the collision tab where the particles are gonna interact with the chunks. So here we have a bake for collision particles. So what this is gonna do is once we click on collision to selection this is going to generate uh, temporary keyframes for these chunks if there are any rigid bodies on the chunks in this particular case we actually baked it to keyframes so it doesn't matter much but if we directly go from the rigid body bake to particles without baking to keyframes then this step is necessary for collisions to work so once we hit selection it generates uh, temporary keyframes for all these chunks so that the collisions can work so let's uh, click on selection and once we add collisions we can work with um, the parameters here for now we're gonna leave the parameters at default and we're gonna head back to bake and we're gonna head to particles and here we're going to bake all particles and let's give the computer some time to calculate now that the bake is done let's go back to the collisions module and remove the collisions and remove the bake action to remove the temporary keyframes that may have been created in order for the collision to work and this also improves viewport performance and let's bring back the columns and let's view the collision and there we go as we can see the debris is interacting with the chunks there we go that's perfect and that's what we were looking for Let's take a look at the smoke module. Under smoke module, uh, let's first work on the outer walls. And here we have two options, either generate smoke from mesh or from particles. Since we already have particles generated, let's work from particles. And then let's say add smoke. There we go. This is gonna generate a domain and the relevant settings. Now let's take a look at the domain. I'm just trying to 
move the domain. Let's say I'll resize my domain to 20 meters in all directions. And I'm going to place my domain in such a way. And let's increase the resolution to 200. And the threshold, let's decrease even more. And we'll use adaptive domain settings. And then we can use noise, but I'll first bake the smoke and then add noise to it. Now let's go to collisions and let's add bottom collision. And under gas, let's use a buoyancy density of negative one as we want the smoke to fall down from the building. And heat as zero. And vorticity 0.25. And then for the scale of the building, let's say the smoke dissolves in between five and 10 seconds. So let's say 100 frames. And we don't need to change anything in the fire section and nothing in the collections. And in cache, let's click on resumable and let's click on modular and change the cache path and then I typically use unicache and field weights and display. Nothing much to change here. And here we have a flow emitter tab as well. So this is the domain tab that we worked with until this point. Here we have flow emitter and under flow emitter tab Let's increase the sampling substeps to like five if there is uh, if there are any fast moving chunks and initial temperature zero to make it uh, equal to the ambient temperature and density of one should be sufficient and update and the rest of the settings can be left by default perfect so that's the outer walls. And one thing we have to remember is that all of the target collections, when we hit bake, all of the emitters from the target collections use only one domain. So let's say we would like to work with the floors and we can generate from particles or from mesh. So for this one, let's select from mesh. So although we generated particles for smoke, we're just using from mesh for the floor's target collection. There we go. And most of the settings would be the same. Let's just ensure. And the dissolve time has changed. So let's do 100. And the rest of the settings would be the same. And each time we add a smoke, some of these settings will change. So we need to ensure before we do a final bake. And in the flow emitters, most of the uh, parameters are the same. But here, since we're using mesh instead of particles, uh, the few things are going to change here, which is surface emission and volume emission and the source. And we can use the default values. And for columns, let's try adding smoke from particles. And always ensure that we are at the beginning of the simulation before we click on Add Smoke. Perfect. So we have all the settings from the particles and the domain. Let's just ensure that. Uh, we are choosing the right domain and the time. Perfect. The rest of them should be same. Perfect. 
So if we have any baked data before for the smoke, it's going to be rebaked again. And the reason for that is all the emitters for uh, from the walls, floors, and columns, they all bake into one single domain, which is this domain. So let's rebake the data. And then we'll see. And let's save the file as smoke. And then bake the data. Here's the rendered animation of the baked data. As few chunks are falling outside the domain, let's increase the size of the domain. Let's turn the X-ray mode on. Let's tab into edit mode. And let's apply scale for the domain. And let's change the domain resolution to 230. And then click on Use Adaptive. And save. And since the domain is common between all the emitters, we can go to Cache. And we can say bake data. And we're going to work with 150 frames. And let's just ensure everything else is the same. All right, let's bake the data. This is a viewport rendering of the animation. This concludes the RPD Lab 1.5 basic workflow tutorial series. Thank you and stay tuned for more tutorials.